a blessed Easter to you, right where you are, listening, perhaps seated on the sofa or at your desk, perhaps even on your bed. Thanks be to our Lord, the blessings of Easter reach us right where we are. I'm once again in our St. Francis Chapel, a most fitting place for Easter. As you can see, these beautiful icons behind me are Georgian Orthodox sisters and brothers so beautifully celebrate glory in their worship space. And Easter is all about glory. It is the celebration of divine love. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. And the love with which Christ gives for us his life on the cross, which we just celebrated in a special way two days ago on Good Friday, is so powerful that he cannot but rise from the dead. Everlasting love, divine love. The resurrection is the definitive victory of divine love. And this victory for everyone forever complete, beyond comprehension, is all for us, for me. Christ would have died and risen if I were the only person on earth. Difficult to believe, huh? Believe it. Divine love is personal. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. If this victorious love is ours, then in celebrating our risen Lord, we celebrate our rising. We celebrate being truly joined to the risen Lord. And thus, deep inside, living in Him and with Him, rising from any death. We know that we will rise from physical death. You may want to reprofess the Apostles' Creed. But each day, we can rise from all other deaths, worry, pain, fear, isolation. The risen Lord is secretly drawing us to himself, an attraction that is respectful, however, of our freedom. And so we must also choose. On Easter, this Easter, there is a special invitation to choose and to experience our Lord, and thus personally to know resurrection. This gospel passage from John chapter 20 helps us in this. We see this divine love reach and at work in Mary Magdalene, Peter, and John. It can and ought to reach us. What are the effects of this love in Mary Magdalene, Peter, and John? Effects that can and ought to be manifest in us. Well, you'll notice how they all run. Don't you just love it? They all run like little kids or my parents' beautiful little Yorkie. And it's not simply because they're in good shape. And John, better than Peter, haste is an effect and characteristic of love. They are all eager to discover, willing to believe. The other effect of this love is the respect that they show towards one another. Respect is an effect and characteristic of love. Mary Magdalene runs to inform Peter and John that together they might investigate. Upon arrival to the tomb, John, although first, looks in but does not enter. He lets Peter enter first, respectful of his leadership in the Twelve. They're not fighting for a privileged position. They each know they already have one. For each of us, our position with Jesus is unique and privileged. And together, 
we form one community, his mystical body. Inside the tomb, they find strangeness and newness. John, the beloved disciple, saw and believed. And then what may seem surprising, Peter and John return to their homes. They, they surely proceed, I think, with the certitude that faith gives. Someone stays behind, however, because of love and sadness, Mary Magdalene. She struggles to, to see through her tears. Jesus, the Lord of mercy, the teacher, her beloved, thus meets her in her sadness. She turns to discover Jesus standing behind her, but doesn't recognize him. She struggles to see through her tears, as we sometimes do. Jesus then poses the same question as the angels, with a view to opening her heart, calling her woman, suggesting his trust in her. Initially, however, she thinks he's the gardener. Talk about huge tears. It is when Jesus says her name that she recognizes him not simply due to the familiarity of his voice. Her name is linked to her person. Jesus seizes her deep inside. Her reaction, to hold him. Of course, who would not want to hold him forever? But Jesus declines the offer. Why? Is the risen Lord still adjusting to his new reality? Of course not. No need for adjustment. It is to lead her further in hope and faith and love. He will hold her and us forever. Christ, though more intimately present to us than we are to ourselves, is a mystery. As much as we may know him, as long as we journey on this earth, we must seek him, him who finds us, even in our death. Christ is risen, alleluia, and wants to be known, he wants to be experienced. Let us yield to him in love, and in letting ourselves be loved by him, we will know joy and peace that surpass understanding right now, right here, in the midst of all that we are experiencing. I promise you. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. Amen.